Vikings. The plan is to first do the entire new album, and then we're going to work back through the uh, Duran Duran catalogue. Our last two or three albums will be easier to mix than perhaps some of the earlier ones, where we will have to go back to the 24-track, multi-track master tapes. Because of the way that Duran Duran work with soundscapes, they lend themselves very well to this type of audio experience. People will never have heard them in that manner before. When we make a song, the sonic architecture is of paramount importance. Every detail. Welcome everybody, hello. Welcome to the Sony 360 reality panel. We're here with some great studio impresarios. Waiting on one here. There we go. The stuff that Don posted. All right, sticks. fabulous. Don, if you're not familiar with Don these Paul. fabulous gentlemen here, I'm here with Simon Horrocks, Mike Larson, Troy Germano. These guys collectively have worked with some amazing artists with some, at nice amazing job. studios. Really impressive roster already. of work, of artists, and you can Google them. I start mentioning names, and it can go on forever, but really incredible. Gold She's Diggers is relatively new on the block, but an incredible complex. Um, Great work, Leon yeah. Bridges and Wolf Alice, Megan The Stallion, so many others. And Mike, you're known for your great work with Pharrell and yeah. mixing and engineering in the studios you run. You're a talented guy all around. Yeah, wow. And uh, Mr. Germano, if we get into all your artists, we can go on forever. Just uh, between Germano Studios yeah. and Hit Factory, the biggest and the best in popular music over, over decades. So uh, you're quite a talent. So it's a great bunch. Of, you guys will probably have questions for them and we'll have time for that in a bit. So get your questions ready. So we'll make sure you have time with these great studio gentlemen. So let's start. First of all, what was your first reaction? Your first time you saw what this meant to the future of audio? So Sony 360 reality audio. Simon, we can start with you what this meant. To you. Hey, Simon here. Um, well, the, we first got involved when music.com came to us and asked us to install a 360 room on behalf of Sony at Gold Diggers as a place for them to socialize the idea with the creative community. Yeah, I'm on. To shoot videos, to shoot, um, to, to sort of let people be immersed in the experience, no pun intended, but. Um, uh, at first, we were, you know, honestly, quite skeptical. Um, Intro or no? Uh, we weren't really sure how it was going to translate. So this is a bleeding edge technology uh, at that time, which was uh, October of 2019. Um, and so we had a little bit of a learning curve in installing the system, getting it to specs, having people come over from Japan integrating it, uh, but as time has gone on, it's become an integral part of our studio. Um, we recently just updated our speaker system from the Genelec system that, uh, that Sony brought to us to the PMC system. It's very similar to the what's in that PMC room over there. And quite frankly, I feel like I heard Sony 360 for real for the first time a couple of weeks ago. and. I have to say, I was completely blown away by it. Um, and I was, most of all, it was probably the most musical immersive format that I had heard. M meaning what? To describe for people that, that, that it's a basic term, but that means a lot just from coming from someone like you. Yeah, so it felt like it was designed f with music in mind as a primary uh, focus. So it wasn't, you know, like a Dolby technology that was, you know, for theaters and then grafted on to me. Hey, this is cool. Let's add music to it. Um, this felt like it was music first. And by musicality, by having the lower hemisphere and being in the 360 environment, really felt like it was much more conducive to the way that music is made 
and the way that I'm hearing music. And I could really, it just felt like I was inside the mix as opposed to, oh, that's cool. This object's just kind of flying around over here for, you know, bells and whistles. So sure. by musically, uh, or musical, I mean that it felt like it was native to music. Very good. And Mike, same for you. You're such a creative guy. And from a creative standpoint, from a tech standpoint, when you first knew this technology existed, what's the first thought you had? What's the first creative decision you wanted to make? Yeah, so I think um, the, the thing that really amazed me about this technology was the possibilities that it kind of opened up to creative people, whether that's artists or producers in the studio. And it kind of, um, it breaks a lot of the rules that we've had in, in music for so long, just, you know, working in like a stereo format and, you know, some, sometimes surround, but um, from a creative standpoint, it just allows the artists or, you know, to, to create in new ways that has never been possible before. Um, and that's where I think the real, uh, uh, potential in this technology lies is not simply just like remixing previous works or you know catalog records in this new format but truly creating in this format and and like starting from scratch with the 360 field in mind it just kind of it opens a lot of doors and and uh, I think once artists begin to latch onto this and understand what the what the possibilities are um, is we're gonna see some really amazing music come out and um, just something new, to, a new way to experience your favorite groups or bands. Um, it's, it's really exciting, and you know, from a from a technology standpoint, I think this is uh, one of the easiest ways to get your feet wet in, in working in immersive audio in this format. It's super user friendly, and I was just you know checking out their new plugin version yesterday, which is amazing, super easy to use. Um, and I think a lot of people are, are going to get into it, and this may start like a new revolution of writing music in a different way. And it's really exciting to me as a as a creative person that that works in that you know in that field. So yeah, very good. And Troy, someone who's seen so many changes throughout the decades, from Hit Factory to the Germana Studios, and you've you've built on the trends, and you've always been at the forefront of everything. What give gave you the courage, the excitement to take this on when you first heard about this technology? I mean, realistically, for us, we just want to be able to offer everything to our clients. And this just seemed like a natural uh, step forward. Um, it's great working in stereo. Um, we've done a lot of 5.1 stuff. And then when this started to happen, um, we wanted to be on the forefront. And we knew we had the space to be able to, to, to make it adjustable to be able to do this. And um, it sounds great. I think it's inspiring people. Uh, Joan Jett, right off the bat. Uh, I didn't expect her to spend as much time here as she did with Kenta working on this. Um, and uh, it's just great for the studios to have those options. You know, people come in and do writing sessions. We're in the hip hop, pop world. Those are like basic tracking sessions for rock. And now we have the ability, instead of just mixing stereo, to be able to do a format, work on a format that we think is exciting. Very good. Now, Simon, you touched on this, implementing this. You say you want to do it, it gets exciting. Talk about the process of actually making this happen. What was the first step? Um, what, what was the learning curve like for you, for your engineers? Well, the uh, learning curve was pretty easy for me because I'm not the engineer. Um, I just sort of delegated that to the folks that are very, very uh, adept in dealing with technology. Um, but first, it was really sort of making the deal from a business standpoint, and then setting up the system in our studio, and then getting people to come and, and listen and experience the format. So that, that's where the challenges were for me, um, was how do, we, how do we turn people onto this thing? I mean, both at the consumer level and then in the creative community. And as Mike was saying, you know, it started out as this is we're going to mix records that already exist in this format. And what I'm really excited for is for when creators really get their hands on this thing and start to create music with the format in mind so that they're thinking spatially at the point of creation and not just, you know, sort of trying to graft that technology onto the end of the, of the process. 
I think that's where the real excitement is going to be. Yeah, definitely. And, and Troy, you were saying how you like your studio to be a paradise for clients, for your engineers. You want to motivate everyone. How did this add to that element to motivate your engineers to, to make it a, this new exciting thing? It's nice. This doesn't happen every day to have this kind of a new technology that's just exciting. No, I, I think they all want to be relevant. And I think you have to adjust. And that's kind of a key thing and adapt. Um, and, and with the most recent project, being able to have the younger assistants be in there with Kenta, who's our chief engineer, and with Tom Panunzio, who worked on the project with Kenta um, from an engineering standpoint, I think it's important that they all kind of rotate through this because here at these studios, my assistants really are engineers. So we're just trying to build engineers and give them as many tools as they possibly can have. So that's why I thought the studio was adaptable to a format like this, and that's what's exciting about it. Um, you want to you want to constantly be different, otherwise people aren't going to come to recording studios. And to, and to that end, Mike, just talk about the joy of that of, of being different. You've you've been different. You've been at the cutting edge with your music, with your work with Pharrell. This must be such a cool knowing you're at the forefront of something. And how much is that in the back of your mind that you're doing something that most people still haven't caught on to yet? People slowly are, but you really are at the cutting edge with this technology, with Sony 360. You're doing something that people haven't really heard still. No, it's been amazing to be uh, to be of help to the Sony team and just sort of developing the, the technology. And um, I mean, I think it was about three years ago that I first got my uh, exposure to 360. And um, at the time, we uh, we mixed about four records of Pharrell uh, and NERD, just sort of as like a demo for the technology. And um, he, he had a festival that year in Virginia Beach, his hometown. And, uh, the Sony team came down and had this big installation where they built this like 100 foot dome that you could go inside of and they had a, I think somewhere around like 30 channels of speakers all around the dome and there were visuals mapped on the, on the top of the dome to the music and it was just kind of this amazing installation where you could come and, you know, hear music in a, in a new and different way and, you know, of course we like went all the way with it. We had sounds like bouncing around and, you know, really took it to the max as far as um, showcasing what was possible. Um, whether, whether it was like musical or not, I don't know, but uh, it, it was a great kind of way to show off, um, you know, the, experiencing music in this new exciting way. Um, but it's been amazing to, to just, you know, see this kind of come from its inception and, you know, very, very raw and rough uh, software that has gotten just better and better and better over the years and and now it's available in a plug-in format which allows people to use it in any daw that they want whatever your preferred uh, software is and um you know it's i think now that it's available to get kind of get in the hands of anybody that wants to try it out it's um it, talk about just how easy that is because all you really and for listeners as well everything about this seems Easy, easier than even than it should be for such a great technology. Absolutely. All you really need is a pair of headphones to enjoy it. But for a music maker, if you could just put into words the process, I want to get it from each of you guys. Is what just the, the basics of what goes into doing this with the plugin? Um, so, in its most basic terms, uh, you basically place the plugin on any track in your session, and that allows you to position it within a, a, th a 360 dimensional space. Uh, Kind of imagine being in like the center of a sphere and you can put sounds above you below you all around you um automate them so they move around to the you know uh, throughout the track um and it's really that simple there, there's a lot of complex encoding and decoding that happens you know behind the scenes but i think the the amazing thing about this new version is that kind of the the technical side of that that can be super confusing is sort of alleviated from the situation and um, you know, it outputs your mix in all the right formats, uh, whatever format you need for delivering a, a track or sending it to somebody, letting them hear it. It's all super simple and um, it's going to be kind of a great equalizer for all users that, you know, they can make sure their, their stuff is getting formatted in the correct way and delivered, the, you know, in the right format. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. And the ease of that for you, Simon, when you've seen it come out of your studio and you've seen artists excited trying this out, just what, what was the experience been like? That experience has been incredible. First of all, I just have to say that his he's being modest about those NERD mixes because those are some of the coolest things that I've heard. Um, when I first heard the technology, I believe that must be your stuff that you did. 
and I was blown away with it. Um, it did have a little bit of the bells and whistles, but I will tell you it was absolutely incredibly musical. Um, one of the biggest, strongest reactions we had is when Paul Oakenfold heard uh, his music in our, in our room for the first time. And to watch those artists have that reaction is sort of proof of concept for me and letting me know that we're achieving the goal that Sony had set out for us, which is to blow people away. And um, that is, that's, you know, thank you for asking that question because I think it's a great point is to, you know, I've been in the position to watch a number of artists come in there and experience it, the Glitch Mob, you know, some creative folks, Oakenfold, those guys, um, a number of other people that have come in and, and experienced it for the first time. They may have been working in the headphone environment or they've had other people sort of work with their material, uh, but it has just been a, a, a hit with the creative community. Yeah, yeah. And Troy, to have someone like Joan Jett, and you can mention others, but someone like Joan Jett is, who's been around in all kinds of records, and to do this acoustic record there and to embrace this technology, just put into words that, that dynamic and how quickly she embraced it and, yeah. and the product. It, it, it goes back to exactly what Simon just said. I mean, I, I've been able to see that with Joan. I haven't seen it, you know, that's, that's the longest one where she was in for a, a long period of time and, and very welcoming for other people to walk in the room. So, and, 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 and as if you were her best friend. And that's kind of really helpful for a studio owner and for people that operate studios. So Simon's right, to see that reaction is a really cool thing. And that lets you know that this is really something that people are getting excited about. And that's totally what happened in, in that particular situation. Uh, similar to what he had said. So yeah, that's why I think we have something here that is very special and, it, and the headphone part of it just makes you be able to hit the masses. But when people get to hear the 13 speakers, whatever facility they're in, um, it's pretty it's pretty impressive, it's pretty amazing. And to think of the young engineers, the music creators, not just here, but with all of us and throughout the world that are gonna do things completely not normal in this kind of a format, just imagine what some of this stuff's gonna sound like. And I mean positively, it's gonna be pretty incredible. And to drive that point home, this amazing sound, anyone, just say it again, if people can listen to this on their headphones at home through a lot of different streaming services, this is available now. You don't need a surround sound speaker system at home. You don't need special audio setups. You can have all that and that's great. But this is everything you're doing and it sounds amazing. People can go home and listen to tonight with, their, with any headphones which is pretty incredible, yeah. Yeah, and more and more, uh, more and more manufacturers are getting involved in supporting the technology, and that's one of the, the things that is, in, is allowing us to dig deeper into working in the format is that we know that it's being supported. Um, so it is being supported by Audio Technica, it's being supported by Sony's hardware. Um, you know, there are the DSPs that are working in this format and we're delivering those files to them. So, you know, that, that's the other aspect. You've got, you've got the creative community that you've got to get involved in this stuff and have them creating content and delivering content in the format. But uh, the flip side of that coin is, you know, essentially letting people hear it and being able to find it in a very, very easy manner for them. So. And as more artists get turned on to this, Mike, just the creative community, just how that's revolutionizing, revolutionizing now the way artists are probably thinking. Because this, you can really start from inception, a whole different way of thinking about music, about recording, knowing where that voice is going to be in the mix, knowing some lyric can be in your left ear, and a bass could be down below you, and a flugelhorn could be up to the right. That, that, those are creative conversations we possibly weren't able to have three years ago. Absolutely. That's like I mentioned before. That's uh, probably the thing that is most exciting to me is is the to think of songwriting in terms of starting in an immersive world and um, you know we've been we've been sort of limited to experiencing music in stereo for you know 50 60 years and um, you know it, when they when stereo was introduced back then and you were coming from a mono format uh, a lot of artists were doing extremely weird things with stereo. There, you know, you go back. To, my favorite example is uh, the Beatles album *Sgt. Pepper's*, and the stereo version of that album. It was originally done in mono. When they went to remix it in stereo, they would do things like put the drums completely on the left channel and the vocal completely on the right channel, and just, you know, I'm sure at the time that was like people were just blown away by that. And it, this is kind of the same thing, you know. It just, you know 
gives you so much uh, more possibility for your your creative process and um, you know making some kind of maybe odd or different decisions that you wouldn't normally do. You know, having a, a vocal that's placed in a certain area to you know make it more impactful or, or drive home a point that you're trying to make or um, you know literally you can go down the down the list of you know the possibilities and and you know that's that's going to be where we're going to start to see some some more like revolutionary kind of music making down in the future well also because you're having fun i mean you three guys are obviously three of the most hardworking guys in the business so you wouldn't be where you are as well as your as well as your teams but to now have that ability to kind of have fun in a new way and to experiment and just what, that's kind of what music's all about, probably why you guys all got into doing this kind of thing. And this kind of adds a new paint to the palette of just having fun in the studio and experimenting and, and making weird decisions and seeing what you come up with. And, and also, if I can add to that, you know, having it be Sony, a company, a, you know, technology company that from the Japan side has been in love with music for the last 60 plus years. Um, they were, you know, they were, they were our partner in, in the Hit Factory in London, and these are people that absolutely come up with incredible digital audio products over the course of the, you know, the last 50, 60 years. Um, so yeah, I, that's, the fact that it's Sony to me is, is such a big thing. You know you can rely on this company, and the, the quality and the level is going to be at the highest. So that makes it exciting for me, and, um, and, and, and this, I think, rubs off on everybody. Now we've talked about all the new artists and new recordings and things like that, but you did mention, and I think it is cool, that this can be done with recordings that are already out there, and it is a new way of listening and making fresh, like the Bowie catalog we've seen as, as one example, and I know there's, there's plenty more. If you guys can just talk about how exciting that's been, maybe just to even to listen to some of the stuff, even if they're not your own recordings, just it kind of creates a whole new recording out of something we maybe thought we were familiar with. Absolutely. Uh, you'll see a lot of artists, especially legacy artists now that are going back and having their whole catalogs, uh, you know, upgraded to an immersive format. And um, I think it's been, it's, you know, uh, I think the kind of method is that you want to keep it sounding as much like the original as you can, but, it's, but while still adding dimension and sort of expanding the sound a bit. Um, you know, it's it's a, a new way for a fan of an artist to experience, you know, some of their favorite records in a, in a new way, and um, you know, it's it's uh, it's exciting because you know the and a lot of times the artist is involved in in the creation and um, you know uh, the mixing of, of the song in this new way, and it's another way for them to sort of you know interpret their art form and and uh, add even mo that much more dimension to a song that is already known and loved and. You know, it gives them more streams because there's a new version of, of the song to listen to, and true, yeah. All, all the labels are like, you know, it's important to them to get as much of their back catalogs into this new format as they can. Just, um, you know, it's all about the numbers, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Troy, any any artists you've worked with over the years that you'd love to see done that way, or have talked to you about new, fresh versions of what they've done? People you're probably still okay. close with. I think we're at the early stages, so I haven't had a lot of those conversations yet, but. I could see many, many people that are here um, on a you know, yearly basis embrace this. Um, so I'm excited about that, and you know, we're you know, we're lucky here because it's a multi-genre studio. We're working on a lot of hip hop and pop and rock and music for film and television. Um, so I, I think it's going to be really it's going to be really interesting to see how these next number of months play out. And as we're getting through this pandemic and all getting back to business, um, this is just another tool in the toolbox be great uh, yeah i couldn't specifically imagine which ones but sure. i think they're all going to be very into it it's like like mike said is it's about numbers and it's going to help the record companies you know, stream more music and more importantly it's going to give the music fans that many more options and the creators that much more leeway to do things that are very left of center similar to like what the beatles did with sergeant pepper uh when when mike mentioned that that's i completely agree I mean, imagine an artist like Prince, if he was alive, what he would have been able to do with a format like this. But there's so many other young people and established artists that I think are going to feel the same way. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I was just going to say, you know, Mike brought up the, the move from mono into stereo that was just echoed by Troy there. And, you know, we've had a lot of false starts in this new sort of format. There was quad, and then there was 5-1, and there were all of these 
different sort of, hey, we're going to make this music be around you. Um, and this really does, for the first time, feel to me like we're moving from mono into stereo. It feels like it's that big of a shift. Um, and I think that there, you know, outside of music, there's going to be other applications within virtual reality, all of those sort of things that are going to come down the line that are going to be more than just music. But the immersive environment is just, I think we're just right now on the cusp of it really taking off. Um, and, you know, to echo Troy's point again, uh, of, of putting this in the hands of young people that are going to be native to that format and not grafting it on. You know, when you're taking a song like, you know, that's that's been in the DNA of our consciousness for the past 30 years and you're used to hearing it the way you're hearing it. I mean, even remastered versions, I like I, the first time I heard LaGrange remixed on ZZ Top, I was like, please, I never want to hear that again, right? Like, I know you can trigger drum samples, but, you know, but... And people have really strong feelings about that stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They have emotional connections. I mean, in the business, on our end, we kind of call it demoitis, right? Like, you're you're used to hearing the, like, little nuanced flaws in, in vocals and stuff, and you're like, great, we're going to recut that. And you go recut it, and everybody's like, ah, it's better, but not, you know, so... So you, d you can't really mess with that stuff too, too much in a way. Um, and at first I was a little reluctant uh, because I was listening to some of these older songs that were redone and thought to myself, ah, you know, they're really not utilizing the technology in a way that I think it could be utilized. But when I started to think about it from the other perspective of, you know, you have an emotional attachment to this music that's been around for a long period of time, you can't really mess with that, you know? So, you know, there's there's a couple of mixes that I've heard by new artists in, actually, I'm in the Dolby format, where uh, Phineas has actually really uh, embraced the technology that gives me a window into what artists are going to do with this stuff. And that's the most exciting part. You know, young engineers that are already thinking they've worked in the format enough that they're thinking of it in advance so when they're creating content it's not an afterthought it's an execution of a vision and yeah. th this ha this has actually uh an impact on live performances similar to Cirque du Soleil so if more and more artists and bands are presenting their music live in an immersive format just think about that and then the impact that has on live albums uh, this this is infinite what could happen here and uh, I think everybody's making some pretty solid points here and that's why it's exciting and that's why you know we're all happy to be here today to help and get this message across to everyone it is like a renaissance in so many ways and Mike just just as a creative guy as well like we've talked about you probably just feel like you're scratching the surface of this thing you know this isn't you haven't done it now this is this is still the beginning of this you probably haven't even begun to show people what you and your artists can do with the technology. Yeah, my uh, just in hearing these guys kind of talk about this as well. It's my favorite sort of thing to look forward to in the future. Is imagine you, you know, you're viewing some sort of VR or AR experience, like within a headset or something like that, and and all of the audio you're hearing that's married to that visual is all done in 360 RA, or, you know, music, sound effects, and perhaps like a, you know, it could be a movie format where you have characters speaking dialogue, and but you're able to look around the environment and sounds you know no matter where you're looking the sounds appear in the correct correct space for where you know the the visual is showing and you know there's just like limitless possibilities honestly with you know what can be done and um i just wanted to also mention that uh the standard now for musicians you know we're, we're only talking about music really but you know there's many other you know possible you know uh genres or art forms that this could be applied to but at least for musicians right now, the standard for if you're putting out a single through like a major label, they want the regular stereo mix and they want an immersive mix. It's across the board now, everyone, it's become, you know, just another thing that you need to turn in when you're turning the song in. So, you know, it, uh, most artists are doing, you know, every format 
um, every uh, every brand, I guess you could say, of, of the immersive uh, world, but um, it's you know standard, and you can go on Apple Music, you can go on Amazon uh, Music, or you know I think Title as well, um, and you have the option to listen to these higher end, uh, higher quality formats and experience them just just like you would any other song. What what then is the message from you guys to people that are considering this, but? aren't quite sure this is the future, even, even after everything, everything you guys are saying, because there's, there's, there's some time involved. I'm sure there's a modest expense, but what, what do you want to say to these, these studio people out there that are watching at home and hearing this audience about this technology? Yeah, I mean, if you're already running you know, a DAW in your studio, which yeah, obviously you would have to be, it's Pro Tools or Ableton, Logic, whatever, uh, you should get this. It's, it's another tool for, for you and your artists to be creative in a new way. and. Like I was saying, it's it's a lot easier than you would think if you can kind of wrap your head around the 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 theory of it that you're able to place sounds within a, a 3D environment. It's literally that simple. You you click and drag the sound where you want it to go, or you know, uh, place it where you want and hit play, and that's it. You, you can get creative with it. There's really no hard and fast rules yet, which I think is sort of the the fun part you know in, a, in the typical stereo mix you do a lot of things that are sort of the standard you want the lead vocal right in the middle uh you know instruments can be panned panned hard left and hard right but in in 360 you can make those new determinations for yourself and decide how you think it should be that's that's really exciting to me yeah a couple uh Absolutely, 100%. My, my thought is dive in, dive in, dive in, make a bunch of mistakes, just get in there, start working in the format. I mean, a lot of what we do at our studio is we have people that have been mixing in a headphone environment because they haven't incurred the expense of building a room and getting the measurements and having a multi-speaker environment. So we are having a lot of people that are coming into our studio, taking the mixes that they've done in a you know binaural environment, and then experiencing that in the room, um, and and that's pretty exciting for us. Uh, the other thing I would say is um, get involved in the community of creators that are you know that are doing this stuff. Um, one of the things that we're talking about doing because the Gold Diggers we have. Uh, we have a bar. <laughs> um, we're gonna start doing like happy hours, uh, like once a month. We've done a couple of 360 workshop panels where we've had folks that are working in the format come in and get together, and you know, let Hero and June and the the folks over at Sony introduce some of the new concepts or some of the latest releases in the technology to the community. And then, you know, this past week, on the heels of coming to now, we um, we also had an event where there were folks that we were sort of evangelizing the um, the format to them. And so we had you there. You came. We, like these guys were there, um, and we got to all really. I feel, experience I feel like it. I missed out. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we missed you. We missed you today, dude. I was looking forward to shaking yeah. your hand and meeting you in person. You're a legend. For I'm sure, the, I'm the new kid on the block. Make, I, I got, guys. I think one thing here, and this is really blunt. I think it's time for people that make music, whether it's on the recording studio side or at home, it's to move through the present into the future, or just simply be left behind. That's what this is. It's that simple. To share in this conversation together, this doesn't happen every day. How much fun is this for you guys to compare notes like this? How much do you learn about the technology? Just already today, if you want to, if you should talk about just the fun of, because you guys are all experts in your, in the craft. Alleged, alleged experts. But I, you know, I think we're we're learning as we go, honestly. And uh, it is it is really inspiring and, and fun to you know share ideas and, and chat about you know, these experiences we've had, because we've all been doing it in our own environments, in our own worlds, and, and uh, you know, getting together with, the, you know, and talking with, with folks like, like you all that are interested in it is, um, it's inspiring, and I'm, I'm you know, re reinvigorated to go back home and, and you know, do something new in, in 360 again, and, uh, um, you know, keep working at it, keep learning about it, keep perfecting my, my method of how I do it, and, 
you know, I think it's a, it's going to be a, a super fun addition to kind of how music is created moving into the future. It's, it's going to be it's going to be good. It's been incredible for me as somebody who started running their first studio in 2019 uh, to having uh, such an illustrious partnership with Sony, have them come and bring this technology into our facility um, and really help and in, in, in embrace the technology to work with these guys, to be associated with these guys, to be associated with Sony, to be associated with Gus, who has you know, been on the forefront of technical integration, to be working with Sony Music, to be creating projects for them. And Jordy, um, this, is, this has just been an incredible experience for me and just, just a really unique way, or, or I don't know if it is unique, but it's, it's something special for me to have such an integrated partnership with a manufacturer as well as a, you know, somebody who's leading in, in the content creation world in the format. So I'm, I just feel incredibly lucky. It's something I always like to ask everyone. I'm going to start with Mike. Just when, when, this is such a great new technology. When do you know when to say, all right, that's enough, and put, put a recording to bed? I always find that so interesting, because you can go on forever with great new technology, and you can have fun. In the creative process, how is that decision made, and who comes up with that between you? When you're sitting there with Pharrell at 2 in the morning one night, when do you know you're done? I think it's just a feeling that you get. Um, the interesting thing about 360 is, of course, you can really show off the technology and you can have things you know circling around you or automated so they're going back and forth but at a certain point it can get it can take away from the music and the and the feeling of the of the song which is really the ultimate goal is uh you know to move the listener in a certain way or convey a certain emotion at the point where you're let's say you know kind of like doing too much it can get distracting and if you've got some instrument that's like you know moving around, and you might lose focus of what the artist wants your attention to be on, whether that's you know the lead vocal like taking you on a journey through the song, or or an instrument within the track. Um, you you always have to sort of maintain the musicality of of the of the song and composition, and you know ultimately that needs to be the goal. Is is not necessarily just you know having things move around just for the sake of them of doing it but you know not losing focus of what what the true intention for the listener to to for their focus to be on i think that's the the, the main key with you know knowing when to be like okay that's that's good right there you know and you immediately celebrate or are you are you a nervous wreck wondering oh, what's no. next back back to the drawing board the next day you know it's uh you never really know at least I never really know like what if a song is going to come out and be successful or not, or if the song will even come out. So, you know, we work on so much stuff that you know never sees the light of day, or or it doesn't get used for its intended purpose. It gets re-recorded by another artist years later, perhaps, or you know, parts of the of the music are stripped away and used for another purpose. And um, you know, you never you never really know. But I think. The, the key is knowing how the, how the song makes you feel. If it, if it gives you a good feeling or an emotion of some kind, I think you're you're right on the money with that. Yeah, well, you guys have all created a lot of music that's given a lot of people good feelings, that's for sure. So you guys know what you're doing. I think it's a good time to open this up to some questions. So wanted to start we'll start with you, sir. And if we can't hear you, we'll have you come up, but we can give it a shot. Hi, my name is Anthony. Great session. Hello, sir. Thank you. Real quickly, you were talking about quad sounds back in the day. <laughs> so, how much of a leap is this from quad? I think I know, but from the experts, how much of a leap is this? Can I touch that one? Absolutely. So, I'm, I'm going to give, I just thought of something, and this is not rehearsed. So we had a mixer that worked at the studios as a resident, Eric E.T. Thorngren, back in the 80s, around 85, and he did a bunch of great records by us. Uh, he was working with the Eurythmics, and I think the song was called Ball and Chain. And I had to go out and buy um, a cyclosonic panner for him. And I'll never forget this. I mean, I remember being, he called me into the control room, and he had put like parts of the song through the cyclosonic panner when Annie Lennox was singing Ball and Chain. 
And during that lyric, it really felt like it was going around your head. And this is 35, 37 years ago, yeah, about 85. And that was a big deal. And Quad had already failed at that point. But this is just that times a million. So that's why I think it's something that people are going to gravitate to. And it's going to sound like something they've never heard before. Hopefully that answers, you know, an example of part of the question. One of the things that I can say about the technology and to probably use a very over used term uh, like a quantum leap forward, but that's what it feels like. Um, the, the fact that they're, you're thinking hemispherical as opposed to just around you is something that is mind blowing. Um, when we just put the new rig, we put the PMC rig in um, Studio 6 at Gold Diggers, we have a very special 5.5.4 system. Did I get that right? <laughs> I'm not the tech guy. But there's, you know, there's, there's music and elements that are coming from underneath you. They're coming from above you. And the concept of the 360 is that you're, you're, you're encased in a sphere of sound. And, um, you know, quad was stuff can go around you but this is this is this is moving in the other hemispheres in a, in a way that has never been done musically ever exactly exactly right you can kind of imagine it as in quad or, or even surrounds you know 5171 these are speakers that are all on the same plane as you just merely in front or behind or to the side um, and not able to be above or below you which 360 does and they have this great graphic i don't know if you guys can show that on the other screen that it's literally uh you see a sphere and there's just there's a a, a person in the middle you know the exact dead center of the sphere and you can you know obviously place sounds anywhere you want above or below behind around you know it's uh so that's that's really the difference with this technology yeah. i have one additional point to make on that oh there it is but um, the other thing is having the ability to listen with a set of headphones. That is something that's completely different than quad. There was no way to listen to, to those sort of surround environments in a, in a headphone environment. So this is something that you could have inside your head and outside your head as you're walking around experiencing things. Yeah, and that yeah, truly is the great equalizer with this is you don't need a complicated 13 speaker setup to do this. You can do it in headphones. And, um, you know, as Simon was saying, he has a lot of clients that they do 90% of the work at home, you know, or, or in their, you know, place of business or whatever. And, and then they bring it to the studio to see how that translates to the speaker system. So you're able to do, you know, almost all of the mix at your leisure in your, in your own comfortable environment and a pair of headphones that you know and love. And, and then you can see how that will translate to, to the true uh, speaker rig and experience that in, in, a, in the true 360 format. Yeah. I, think, I think also, you know, stereo is an amazing thing. We all love our records in stereo and some stuff sounds great in mono. But this brings music to life. When you walk on the street, you don't hear music coming to you from one direction or two directions, left and right stereo. You hear things from above your head or side side to your ears from the floor from the, from from the sky from above you anywhere and this is what this does it brings music to life in a way that it's never been brought, brought to life before like walking on the street very good next question anyone have something for our guests how does this change for you guys now forever listening to you're saying stereo is great but do you listen to everything differently now do you not that it takes away from classic recordings, but is, now that you've been in this sphere, as it were, does that change your perspective on music in general forever? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, if, if I were if I were not uh, working in the music business, if I was a, a fan, just a casual listener of, of music, I think this would be something that I would be interested to hear. Uh, just, um, you know, a new way of, of listening to, to artists that you love. But I, I think personally, for myself, I'm always kind of listening with a, with a critical ear and, and imagining 
that's how something could be different or better. It's just, you know, I, since I was a kid, I've been dissecting music and being like, well, oh, I wonder why that sound is sounds more on the left than on the right, or, you know, just always kind of like picking it apart and putting it back together, reverse engineering something to figure out how something was done or why it was done in a, in a particular way. It's, it's always been fun to me, so. I think for me personally, I'm, I'm always like listening in that way and just imagining what, what could be enhanced, I guess. Yeah. You know? In terms of the streaming experience, I know Simon, you've been at the forefront of that with Gold Diggers during the pandemic. You've had some great presentations. You've been able to pivot as a lot of people and create some great things. Do you see this technology then available through that? Are you excited about what that can mean in terms of people at home as it evolves? It, it's made for that. That's the, That's the greatest thing about it is you know, as, as Mike was just talking about the situation that we have with the technology, it made me realize that, you know, this gentleman, Anthony, had a question about quad. I mean, it was all about come over to my house and listen to my stereo setup, you know. And this is like native mobile in your head. Take it with you everywhere. It's the exact opposite of that. It's you know, everybody's having a personalized experience that they're able to take with them through their devices. And I think it's really one of the first formats outside of the other mobile format that Sony created, which was the Walkman. Um, think about that revolution um, of how that changed music to being, you know, I remember walking around the first time, like the first time I went to New York City, you know, and had a, those, yellow headphones on with you know making sure that i had enough battery power to listen to my police cassette or whatever you know but getting to experience life with that and you know i mean troy just said it he's like music is coming from everywhere all of those are around us and and you know now we can personalize that experience with this technology very good The question is, I'll repeat it so everyone can hear. The question is, is there one album sonically engineered wonderfully that you could listen to other than one of yours, would you recommend? To kind of just get an experience of, of, of this format? No, no, any. Oh, just in, something that I would want to hear in, in 360. Yeah, wow. that's a good question. Just that's a, a great question. sounding record. Peter Gabriel, so. Uh, great record. So get some thumbs up there, all right. <laughs> That was that, that mine. album had a huge influence on me as a kid. I I think the the advancements at the time with recording technology made just gave that album a certain kind of polish that I don't think was common definitely in uh, in the in the 80s. But that for me that would be my opinion. Yeah. Peter Gabriel So the album's called So S O. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna probably cheat and go with a couple of them here, but I'm gonna say Back Sea Change, just because that album to me uh, sonically is one of the greatest things. Uh, anything by Radiohead. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say OK Computer by Radiohead. There I think go. that in 360 would be amazing. Yeah, and like I'm still trying to convince Sony to let us do this, but there is a. There's a set of classical compositions by a composer by the name of Holtz, who created this thing called The Planets, where essentially it is every planet has its own piece of music. And that music has been inspirational for so many movies. If you listen to Mars, you're like, oh, that's where Star Wars came from. Um, but I would absolutely die to mix that in 360 because it's the damn universe, you know? It's, it's our damn solar system. So I'm officially putting it out there that I would love to have our people mix Holtz the Planets, and I'm sure Sony Classical Music has an incredible recording of it. So please, June. <laughs> and Troy, do you have an answer for that one? Oh, I, I, oh, okay, I did, computer radio head. 
So right, I right, 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 right. You chimed in there with Radiohead. Going back to okay. Beck, I can listen to um, Little One, I think a song on that album. There's some so like a ghost ship sounds of jangling ropes and chains at the beginning that are just kind of magical. It is a great record. What, what's your ideal listening experience, if you can put into words, if you're home alone or out and about, if, you, if your favorite record, one of these maybe you just mentioned, what would be the ideal setup? Hmm. Doesn't have to be tech setup, just yeah, environment. I think, I think just a, a great, comfortable pair of headphones that, that you can sort of be in any environment, whether it's you know going outside for a walk or sitting on the couch at home, just wherever you're comfortable and you can kind of, you know, disappear into the music, so to speak, you know. A lot of people are, you know, they put music on when they're doing something else. They're, you know, cleaning up at home or doing the dishes. They've got some music going. But I think when you really want to get into the music and experience, you know, if you're, like, listening to an album for the first time or listening to one of your favorites, um, there's something to be said for just sort of an uninterrupted musical listening experience, which... You know, unfortunately, I don't think is really commonplace anymore. You know, um, it's always, always listening passively instead of listening actively. And uh, I think the more that, you know, especially for albums that you love, I think just sitting down and maybe turning your phone off or you know putting it on silent or something while you spend 45 minutes to an hour and listen to something would be would be my ideal listening experience. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm 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 spoiled. I have uh, seven recording studios you do. Uh, with incredible speakers, and I get to experience that. And I'm you know, as a guy who uh, you know you remembers the days when you used to go to the audio store and pick out your components and figure out which the receiver and which set of speakers and you know, ask the geeks that were at those stores which cassette player I needed and all that stuff. And then, you know, having my first DAT player <laughs> and my first uh, my first CD player, to be able to go into Studio 6 in my building and listen to, you know, be immersed in sound is, is truly mind-blowing to me. I also have a set of speakers in Studio 3 that are these head speakers um, that are just ungodly they're mastering speakers they're about thirty thousand dollars a piece and we have those and i will go in there and listen to uh, movie soundtracks and and i think i actually cracked the drywall at one point listening to the tenant soundtrack because that first piece of music uh that was Great in the, the concert hall in that movie is yeah, just yeah. My, ludwig the, the the guy who won the academy award for Black Panther did that record. That that thing freaks me out. <laughs> I love it. And Troy, you have you have an amazing studio yourself, of course. You with a, a lot of places you can dive in. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to say something that no one's going to expect. Kent is sitting right in front of me, my chief engineer, and he might guess what I'm going to say right now. Just sitting at my desk with my very inexpensive, active, power big speakers. Uh, sitting there blasting music to the point where he walks in sometimes and looks at me and can't believe how loud I'm listening. That's my favorite environment because it's very common. Anybody else can kind of replicate that. You know, most people can't replicate what, you know, what, what Mike listens to, where he's listening, or where Simon is, where I am, or where Kenta is. You know, we're really fortunate, lucky people to be sitting in front of, you know, massive, expensive things that are just procured and perfect. But honestly, these cheap $300 speakers in my office sound really good on a glass desk with a computer i i'm doing it all day long and i do shut off my phone when i can or put it on silent like mike says and i'm listening to peter gabriel so or all these other records that you could imagine and to me that's the coolest and uh it just makes me relax that's great well this has been wonderful this is really all truly about the joy of music about music in the present about music in the future and the Sony 360 Reality Audio is really on the forefront of all that. And thanks for sharing your thoughts on it and your work with it. And it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you. Thank you Thank for including us.
be in the middle of the music. So you surround yourself with all the sound. You might put the bass and drums behind the head and put the strings somewhere up here and the lead vocal right in the middle. I particularly like working with some of the sound effects. When I went into the studio with our engineer, uh, Josh Blair, I said, well, what can we do? What's possible? It was quite joyful when I realized that you can actually move things around on an iPad or, or on a computer screen. You can take a sound, you can take a guitar and say, well, I don't want the guitar in the center of the stereo. I actually want the guitar about there. And I want it to move down to over here during that verse. Once I realized the possibilities of what you can do, it was fascinating to try out different things. The plan is to first do the entire new album, and then we're going to work back through the uh, Duran Duran catalogue. Our last two or three albums will be easier to mix than perhaps some of the earlier ones, where we will have to go back to the 24-track, multi-track master tapes. Because of the way that Duran Duran work with soundscapes, they lend themselves very well to this type of audio experience. People will never have heard them in that manner before. When we make a song, the sonic architecture is of paramount importance. Uh, every detail, every sound of every instrument, every special effect, it gives you a mood, it creates an atmosphere. It's what makes records magical to me. It is undoubtedly a move into a different type of technology that, that gives the listener a more enriched, immersive experience. Hi, I'm Paul Epworth. I'm here at Church Studios in London. And I've just listened to one of my tracks called Hyperspace in Sony 360 Reality Audio. And it's blowing my mind. I've just made a space concept album that's a lot like some of the records that were it's very popular to make in the 70s. So to start off with, we put 2001, amongst other sci-fi films, on a projector screen just in front of the desk here. We hunkered down for, you know, on and off for about five years. Really, it got to the point by the end of the record that I couldn't listen to it anymore. It was, you know, I'd heard it so much. Somebody played me a demonstration of this Sony 360 format. I knew there was huge possibilities with what you could do. For me, it felt like the jump from mono to stereo stereo to 360. In the demonstrations I found almost like a synesthetic experience. If you shut your eyes, you know, sounds are flying around your head. You can feel the air moving behind you on the speakers and even in headphones you really do get this um, incredible sense of three dimensions. We gave the final stems to a, a mixer named Chris and I said go for it, you can just do anything you like with it. Really it doesn't have to be a representation of what stereo is. It can be fully psychedelic immersive experience. When I went to go and approve the final version that he'd done, it moved me to tears. The feeling for me was really like watching this 2001 movie, the point at which he goes through the Stargate at the end of the film. It was this really three-dimensional psychedelic experience, like I was really experiencing physically the sound. Most of these other 3D sound experiences are only available on speakers. The beauty of this is that it's available to everybody on headphones. It's a real step forward and to the point where I'd love to actually make all my records in this format. I think in an age where we all use headphones, we all have our own personal devices to listen to music on, and music doesn't have to be a shared experience, there's something about this format that really allows you to disappear into another world. It's like virtual reality for your ears. It just it definitely feels like I know that my ideas can be more fully realised given the fact this is available to me now. You can listen to my track Hyperspace on Sony 360 Reality Audio on music.com.
Hi, I'm Nick Rhodes from Duran Duran, and we are about to experience our music in immersive 360 reality audio. <laughs> Duran Duran were approached by 360 Reality Audio and as soon as uh, I heard what the premise was, I was intrigued. We've always been excited by new technologies. It's the new frontier. It makes you feel as if you are in the center of the music. It feels as though it's all around your head you can really experience music in an entirely new way. The idea was that we would start with our first single from the new album, Future Past. Which was a track called Invisible. We played around a lot. It was the first time I'd used a 360 reality audio and I wanted to understand what would heighten the audio experience the most. Of course, you can move everything around all the time, but that isn't necessarily the best way to use the system. What you want is for the listener to be in the middle of the music. So you surround yourself with all the sound. You might put the bass and drums behind the head and put the strings somewhere up here and the lead vocal right in the middle. I particularly like working with some of the sound effects. When I went into the studio with our engineer, uh, Josh Blair, I said, well, what can we do? What's possible? It was quite joyful when I realized that you can actually move things around on an iPad or, or on a computer screen. You can take a sound, you can take a guitar and say, well, I don't want the guitar in the center of the stereo. I actually want the guitar about there. And I want it to move down to over here during that verse. Once I realized the possibilities of what you can do, it was fascinating to try out different things. The plan is to first do the entire new album and then we're going to work back through the uh, Duran Duran catalogue. Our last two or three albums will be easier to mix than perhaps some of the earlier ones where we will have to go back to the 24-track multi-track master tapes. Because of the way that Duran Duran work with soundscapes, they lend themselves very well to this type of audio experience. People will never have heard them in that manner before. When we make a song, the sonic architecture is of paramount importance. Uh, every detail, every sound of every instrument, every special effect, it gives you a mood, it creates an atmosphere. It's what makes records magical to me. It is undoubtedly a move into a different type of technology. That, that gives the listener a more enriched, immersive experience. Listening to this piece of music on Sony 360 reality audio, the feel of being surrounded by it was really interesting. Obviously the word spatial comes to mind. Hi, my name is Steve Jordan. I am a musician, producer, and I've been lucky enough to work with my good friend Keith Richards for the past 30 years. After we did Main Offender, you know, you get to tour after you make an album. These live performances popped up from London in 92. The thing about this is that it's never been heard. Uh, I really love this version of 999, this live version. Hard driving thing, and you get pumped up by the crowd. And by this time, we had been playing it a while, so we really locked in on the groove. It was a 
fantastic show. I couldn't believe it was 30 years ago. It sounded like we rehearsed. <laughs> The great thing about Sony 360 RA is that you can experience the sound on any headphones. Usually, that's not the case. You have to get some special thing with a jack that you have to get an adapter for to get, listen, you know, that's a plus. That means you can go out and check out these new mixes without a problem. I can really hear 360 RA coming in very handy in um, assigning parts, you know, what instruments play what. You can actually compose with this sonic technology in mind. Recording is an art form that takes a while to master and then there are always new things. 360 RA will no doubt integrate into producers ways of thinking and composers and stuff because there are more things you can do with the recording. It's exciting in that way, you know, just another tool for people to get excited about in the studio. You know, I always say as a drummer, I have the best seat in the house um, because I get to be right in the, basically most of the times in the middle of the band, then I can see the audience and see what they're reacting to, what they're not reacting to. And that's all part of mixing a live record as well, where the audience is, how they're reacting, how to get it where it doesn't sound completely fake. You have to really be careful balance-wise. And uh, so to get the audience right in 360, when you get it right, it's great because you feel like you're at the show, which is the point. I hope you guys get a chance to experience the expensive winos live 92 town and country in London. Music is a powerful language, not just for communicating a message, but for retaining that message deep in the consciousness of a listener. 360 Reality Audio was the perfect solution for our immersive experience for Divine Tides, because Divine Tides is such a layered musical album. The 360 plugin, it's very quick for me to use because I can see a ball on the screen and I can grab it and draw it. And what's also great about it is I can do a rough move, then I can go back in the Pro Tools and fine tune it. That's a powerful tool for me. When I do stereo content, creating depth is really challenging. And 360, it's a quicker process because I have the entire room. It gives you a lot of opportunity to spread it out and make it really theatrically. All these different elements actually have their own space to occupy. It really does feel like it comes around. The focal point, the vocal in this case, really is separated and all of the ambience seems to come from all the way around it. Much richer than stereo. As a composer and as a mixing engineer, I believe that 360 Reality Audio is not just some sort of a tool which we get into at the end stage of actually creating a song, but it is actually an extension of our creativity. This project tells incredible, beautiful stories, and that's why 360 Reality Audio is the perfect technology for this project. My name is Keith Harris, two-time Grammy Award-winning producer, songwriter, musical director for the Black Eyed Peas, Whitney Houston, CeeLo Green, Michael Jackson, Busta Rhymes. It's a long list. So the ultimate goal for a producer is to connect with your audience, give the energy and the emotion behind what was created, and transfer that to the listener so they can be totally engaged in the experience. Using the 360 Reality Audio plugin allows me to tell the musical story that I hear in my head.
check out this new track I've been working on. Let me show you how mixing in 360 reality audio works. It all starts with your stems. A stem could be anything. It could be strings, bass, keyboards, drums, whatever you like. So let me start with selecting my string sound. So what's cool is you can take any sound object and move it around the sphere. Let's place my synth stems. <laughs> and now, let's add in the beat. I can move my stems in 360 space above me or below me. And I can even automate all my moves. And what's dope is that the 360 Reality Audio plugin works with any pair of headphones. I think this plugin is for anyone who wants to enjoy a more immersive audio experience. It gives me total and absolute control of my audio and my mixes. It opens up a whole new sphere of space to mix. From your bedroom producer or your two-time Grammy Award-winning producer, 360 Reality Audio, game changer for sure. What's up, y'all? This is Alicia, and I'm super excited because you are now able to experience my entire catalog in 360 Reality Audio, like in this whole multi-dimensional experience from any smartphone with any headphone, you're going to be able to like submerge yourself in this brand new experience. And I can't wait because I want you to hear all of my stuff all over again. <laughs> And y'all know Anne, here goes my not only very, very close friend, one of my best friends, my engineer, uh, a sonic mastermind, my partner with all of the music that we create. And we've been big on being, you know, at the forefront of this type the technology. of technology. Um, you're a technology, like, super wizard, right? I you know, do, I a, love to learn, right? I mm -hmm. think at the end of the day, it's not about credits anymore. It's like how we're all evolving and, and you as an artist, mm -hmm. it's like, the thing that I love about what you do is you're not just an artist, you're into tech, you're into learning. You spend many m months in the off albums learning keyboards right. and technology and you know programming programming different synths and right. i think that we started to use this technology two years ago which was really incredible because we got into the glitches of it the twists and turns of the technology and now we're at the forefront of it it's really exciting to partner with sony and with amazon you know on this whole rollout and catalog right and, and we built a hybrid where we went and reimagined each mix so when the user hears the stuff they're he hearing elements that not just stems that you're getting from a stereo mix, you're getting all these raw files that are reimagined and it's a total different experience as it should be. So. That's right, because let me tell you, we always go the extra mile. I think that's what people know about us, know about me, is that you know right. when we start creating anything, it's always gonna be the top way to do it you know i love how you said that and that's been an exciting experience for me obviously we've lived with this music and we've created this music and we've heard it almost it feels like in every way it could possibly be heard right and when we're able to dive into the 360 reality audio of it it literally becomes a new experience and i think that's what blows my mind and that's what's so cool about music is it's such a so, so, it hits you so square in the heart that when you're able to hear it with the different dimensions um, and you're hearing vocals on a side that you didn't quite pay attention to before, you're hearing a, a part that never- Was buried, right? Yeah, that or never, never stuck heard. out to you. Right. How do you care about sound as an engineer? Like, what is sound to you? Sound is like painting a picture, right? Painting a solid sonic picture, you know? It's um, seeing sounds. You know, hearing colors is what I like to say. Yeah. The fact that you love the sonic picture as well as a producer. So the type Correct. of 
producer, artist, writer that you are, arranger is the type of engineer I wanted to be. So that's why the dynamic works well because we could sit and paint and each album has its own experience, yeah. its own vibe, its own, if you go through songs in A minor to Diary, to As I Am, to Element of Freedom, to Girl on Fire, to Here, to Alicia, to the new record, each one has a, a different story and it took different twists and turns in different cities and yeah. and that is what inspired it all, gear and direction, where here is like a New York mixtape almost. Right, it is. You know, is, and, is. and the diary is all about songwriting and Songs in A Minor is about showing who you were as, as your debut on the scene and right. you really, you know, fought that great fight. So here we are today, eight albums later, you right. know, being able to reinvent the stuff and reintroduce your music to the world, which I think is important in a new way. So today I'm hearing um, a lot of the mixes for the first time actually, which is cool. You've been working on it. You're like, Alicia, I'm, I'm getting into a place. I want you to hear it. And so when I first came in, the first song you played for me was I Need You, which is, let's just be honest, one of my favorite songs. I'll never forget creating that song. Mm -hmm. We had so many sonics in there. Mm -hmm. We had not only live drums, but programmed drums. We had percussion, yes. real live percussionists. We had real horns. We had clavichords and harpsichords and pianos oh, yeah. and clavinets yeah. and rows. I mean, we really went crazy. And the vocals are stacks on stacks of these different, you know, powerful feelings and emotions. It's one of my favorite lyrical songs as well. Um, written with Harold Lilly, myself, and Mark Batson. We were in the room together creating that, so hearing it today, mm -hmm. like, was so, felt so good, because I didn't know what, what the first one was that was gonna come on, and when it was that one, I was like, yes! I just started vibing out. And I thought it was really exciting, you know, to be able to hear these tones and these sonics that, you know, I recall in my head for the memory of creating it. Right. But hearing it there, and hearing it, you know, in this 360, reality way where you could just pick out things you you didn't hear before i loved it i was sitting here just lost in the voice over here i was lost in the horns over here i was lost in like you know the rows and piano over here and there's this perspective to it that i was just i fell in love with it all over again I think that's the goal with 360 audio if you could reimagine the mixes as opposed to just right post mix throwing a few faders and reverbs in the space we're actually using the whole sound field and we understand it and we're actually trying to move and pan and eq in a way where you feel the depth of the the, the music right. which is it's, it's exciting to see the technology evolve and then we got to girl on fire which is of course one of the favorite, favorite songs. And, you know, I just started to like even go back. It's so crazy how, how many memories songs hold. And I just even went back to that first session where I first played Girl on Fire for everybody. And and that was where we ideated about getting Nikki on the song. Mm -hmm. Spirit of Marilyn calling me, audibly, balling she, said that she would never leave, continue to torture me. me I loved how she delivered such a personal verse, like something that felt so like, with so much longing, but strength, but chaos, but truth. And I felt like I could hear that, you know, even even listening to that version. We have a, a, a few different versions of Girl on Fire, mm -hmm. but listening to that version with Nikki, I really felt like in that 360 reality audio, just listening to it from that perspective, I felt all those that emotion that comes through so strong with that. And and even, you know, I think one of our favorite things about Girl on Fire is it's, it was the first time we, started to really discover that less is more. Yep. That sonically, you don't have to pile so many things into a song in order for it to sound massive and sound like there's a lot in it. And I think Girl on Fire is one of our most prime examples of how powerful a song can be with so little. It was literally the CP70 
that you then reamped and mm -hmm. put like all types of cool distortion and different different filters and effects on multiple times and then redid it and redid it and redid mm -hmm. it. And it's that one sound that's in there plus that, that low end that's down at the bottom there. It's a there. ream keyboard, so it's actually- Yeah, that ream, I remember. It's a bass and the organ, yes. and that's it. it. If you take the effects off of the CP70 where it sounds like a B3 and it mm -hmm. sounds like guitars in the chorus, it's the same track duplicated. It's amazing. So yeah, I Pretty love that song for how big it sounds, but how little the production is. And the fact that you can fill the space 